The RD4 reel to reel tape recorder needs maintenance on a regular basis. The machine needs three oil wells to keep the oil flowing to the reel motors and the capstan motor. These are easily accessible at the top of the tape recorder. The oil well contains a piece of cotton. This cotton soaks up the oil and allows it to gradually drive down to the motor. Once the oil well is full, a cap is replaced onto the top of it. This has a small breather hole in it, which allows no vacuum to happen. The same for the capstan, and also the mechanism for the pinch roller. There is a large rotary control bottom right hand side of the control panel. Switch to 15 inches a second, this switches the recorder on. The machine uses either the standard reels or these AEG centers. The supply reel or the pancake of tape goes onto the left hand reel motor, goes around the counter roller, through the tension arms, across the heads, through the capstan path, and then onto the take up reel or platter. The AEG DINs are something that came off the German magnetophones and the Tonschreiber machines. Not very popular in America or in England, however the early EMI machines could use this format. The BTR1 used platters and the BTR2, which is the equivalent of this machine here, also could use them. These are 11 inch platters, which could be purchased from EMI with complete tape on one of the platters. The tape recorder keeps a high tension on the tape to make sure that the tape does not come off. So the tape, as you can see in this picture here, is quite tightly wound onto the spindle. This also makes it very easy to take the tape off afterwards and be able to manoeuvre it around without losing it. Many reels don't have a lower pancake to them unlike these platters, therefore tape tension is essential. Inside this particular tape recorder it has been modified. This particular machine has had the electronic valves unit removed. Instead, it has a one rack of amplifiers and record amplifiers. This was a modification done by the BBC. It was to allow the machine to record in stereo. We also have a similar system inside the mixing console. Here, we can see a rack of cards. These cards contain the record and replay amplifiers for the mixer, loudspeaker output, and the plus and minus 24 volt rails. Below we have the post box in out box to be able to mix between three different tape recorders and the hypertext connectors. The heads are designed to be removed from the machine quite easily. Here we can see the record, replay and reproduce heads. There are three screws holding on the head cover. There are two black grommets also on the top of the head cover. These are an afterthought modification designed to be able to adjust the azimuth control on the heads whilst the shield is in place. Underneath the head shield we have further more shields. The replay head has one shield covering the uh, second shield and inside the two shields we have the main head. The whole head block assembly can be removed. This is so that the head can either be serviced or replaced quickly. Many professional machines have this system where the whole head block can be removed by just some simple adjustments or simple removal of some screws. This machine is no exception. We have pull out cables, three screws and the whole thing will come out of place. Once the head block has been removed the working or replacement head block can then be put back into place. Attaching the cables and screwing back in three locating screws that keep the whole thing in place.
Once the recorder is laced up and the leader tape is through the system, the machine can then be operated. If we switch the switch here, the machine now works on a fader control. This means once the fader is turned on, notice it's going down rather than up, the machine starts playing. Pushing it back to zero, and the machine will stop. Putting the switch back into normal position, this means that the machine can then be used from the local control system. Well, you cannot if it's in faded control. Another system is the remote control. This means that the machine can be started remotely by the mixing console. This is useful if you wish to start more than one machine or three machines at the same time. The machine is capable of controlling three tape recorders, machine 1, 2 and 3, also being able to select between the input and output of each and individual machine. The machine has output controls, you can change the balance from left and right, and the output level control. The mixing console also has a dual PPM driver, showing at the moment left and right channels. We can also sum the two signals together and show the minus between the two. This is suitable for making sure that the balance is correct. The machine also has what's called a slug effect. This means that the rise and decay is incredibly slow. Although it looks like the needles aren't me moving, they are. We have a large clockwork counter. This is an accurate tape time counter, driven from the left hand roller. And as you can see here, it spins around quite slowly. 